Hello and welcome. In today's class, I'll be discussing on the topic computational complexity, which is part of the IAC class 12 computer science syllabus. So to understand computational complexity, first of all, we need to understand what is an algorithm. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step set of instructions to be followed to accomplish a specific task or solve a particular problem. In simple terms, you can say it's like a recipe to perform any task. For instance, to solve a Rubik's Cube, there might be a set of instructions that we might follow until the goal is achieved. Now here I have listed some sorting algorithms. There are many, many sorting algorithms. Bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, quick sort, merge sort are some of these sorting algorithms. Now why am I listing all of these sorting algorithms? Because now one question arises. When there are so many sorting algorithms, how can I say which algorithm is better than the other? How can I compare two algorithms? So we want to compare two algorithms and say, okay, this algorithm is better for sorting because this algorithm is faster. So to compare two algorithms or to measure the performance of any given algorithm, there are internal factors as well as external factors. Under internal factors, we have time and space, meaning how much time an algorithm takes to solve a given problem. And space means how much memory the computer is taking to solve that problem. And there are some external factors also, like the input size. How much data are we working with? Is it just a small set of data or is it a huge amount of data? Let's say millions or billions of data. Another external factor is the CPU speed or the CPU power. If you have a faster CPU, the performance will improve to some extent. Also, the compiler, if the compiler is efficient, then also the performance of a program can improve. So we saw that the title of the chapter is computational complexity. So computational means here we are doing some kind of computation. We are solving a problem at hand. Whereas complexity means measurement. How fast or how quickly the computer is solving that problem. So complexity refers to the measure of the performance of an algorithm. The resources like time and space are measured to find the complexity of an algorithm. So you saw in the previous slide that we have both internal factors as well as external factors, but internal factors are considered to be much more important than the external factors. And out of time and space, time is considered to be more important. So what is exactly this time complexity? So time complexity is measured as the number of instructions executed by a given program. When we hear time complexity, it sounds like we have to measure time in seconds or milliseconds maybe. Time complexity actually means the number of instructions executed. So if a program takes seven steps to solve a given problem, so that's the time complexity of that program. It's actually the number of steps taken by that program to solve that given problem. And we will be using big O notation to measure the performance of an algorithm. Now, what is big O notation? So big O notation is a function that tells us about the worst possible performance of an algorithm. So an algorithm can have best case 
एवरेज केस और वर्स्ट केस बेस्ट केस मीन्स इन वॉट सिचुएशन एंड एल्गोरिदम कैन गिव ऑप्टिम परफॉर्मेंस एवरेज केस मीन्स वेन यू आर रनिंग द सेम प्रोग्राम सेवरल टाइम्स एंड यू फाइंड आउट द एवरेज परफॉर्मेंस दैट एक्चुअली इंडिकेट्स द एवरेज केस एंड द वर्स्ट केस मीन्स वट कुड बी द वर्स्ट सिचुएशन for that particular program and how is it going to perform during that worst situation so we'll try to understand this with an example so we have taken the linear search algorithm the time complexity of linear search algorithm is big o n now what does it mean it means that the algorithm will take at most n steps to give the result not more than that and n is the input size so suppose you have an array of size n so in the worst case what might happen in linear search in the worst case the element that you are searching for might not be present in the array so that is an example of the worst case in such a case the program will go through all the elements one by one from starting till the end and then it will realize that the element that you are searching for is not present so that's why we can say it takes n steps maximum to solve that problem so if your array has size 100 it can take roughly 100 steps to give the result what could be the best case when the element that you are searching for is present at the very first index that is index 0 so the very first element you compare and you found that element right there that is an example of the best case an average case so randomly you are searching for elements you run the program several times you find out the time complexity for each instance and then you find out the average that's the average case now when we are finding the time complexity or space complexity we have to look for the dominant term what is the dominant term so while computing the complexity of an algorithm we consider the term that has the most impact on the algorithm's performance this term is known as the dominant term again we'll try to understand this with an example So again I have taken linear search over here and you can see that the loop is running n times depending on the size of the array and in each iteration three things are happening the condition is checked whether i is less than a dot length or not if the condition is true we enter and we check the condition if key is equal to a of i or not if it's true then break will execute but if it's not true then i plus plus which is the third statement so i plus plus will execute so that's why in the worst case performance here i have written 3n so you can see here i have written 3n because this loop is running n times where n is the size of the array and three tasks are being repeated this for loop condition if condition and i plus plus so three times n once the loop ends then this if condition is being checked if the condition is true the first statement executes otherwise the second statement executes so condition and the statement two tasks so that's why plus 2 and when we look at this expression we see that this part 3n is the dominant term because when n will be huge in size when n is very big plus 2 will be trivial it will have you know it will be negligible so that's why 3n is dominant and again when we look at 3n when n is very big 3 times n will not make much of a difference so 
is also being ignored. And so we can say that the worst case of the linear search algorithm is big O of n. Let's take another example, time complexity of bubble sort. Now we know that for bubble sort, we run a nested loop. So this inner loop is more or less, you can say running n times. So firstly, the inner loop runs n minus one times, then n minus two times, n minus three times until one time. And we know that the sum of this series is n into n minus one by two. So n minus one is almost the same as n. So we can say n squared and divide by two doesn't make much of a difference. So we can say n squared is the dominant term here. So we can say the time complexity of bubble sort is big O n squared. So if we have 10 elements, the bubble sort can take 10 squared. That means 100 steps maximum to solve the given problem. If bubble sort is working with 100 elements, then 100 squared means 10,000 steps will be taken to solve that problem. So this is how time complexity gives us an idea how many steps this algorithm is going to take roughly. And these are some of the common growth rates. If any task is being done in a fixed amount of time, we call it constant. So for example, if I want to access an element in an array, it will be done in a fixed amount of time. So we can say it will take constant time. Binary search, it's logarithmic. So log in. Linear search, it takes n steps. So linear. Quick sort, n log in. Bubble sort, selection sort, quadratic. n squared means quadratic. Simultaneous linear equations, cubic. N cube. And the Tower of Hanoi problem is an example of an exponential time complexity, 2 to the power n. So that's all in this chapter. I hope you have got the idea of computational complexity. So computational complexity gives us the idea about the performance of an algorithm, mainly based on time and space. So time here mainly refers to how many steps the algorithm will take to solve a given problem. So thank you for watching. See you in the next class.